Alrighty, so it's time to do another news of the week episode, and there really isn't much news to talk about in this news of the week episode, mainly because we're still in the June international break. Well, actually, technically, we're now at the end of the June international break with a full slate of MLS action started to once again happening this weekend. But we also talk about most of the important news, like Ronnie Dahlia going to Standard Liège and leaving NYCFC, and I made a single video about it. And then I, of course, talk about the next TV deal that MLS is going to have, which is a blockbuster kind of deal where Apple TV is going to now broadcast every single MLS game starting in 2023 all the way to 2033. And I already made a, a detailed video analysis of how it's going to look like. But in terms of remaining news that I'll talk about here on the board, and even some that I didn't put here on the board, but I just kind of quickly want to talk about, is that uh, both Hector Herrera and Andres Kubas has now arrived with their team. Andres Kubas actually played in the game for the Whitecaps coming off as a bench against the Sounders last night. And then Hector Herrera, I think his debut is going to be th this this weekend if I, I read correctly but yeah that should be very interesting and certainly dynamo fans are looking forward to this for a long time especially with the way that ever since he he of course signed with the team you knew that there was a lot of excitement especially really the dynamo hoping to really tap into that mexican fa fan base in the houston area to get excited that they of course got one of the more well well-known mexican player in the l tree na national team but uh, besides that we also had Giorgio chiellini going going to uh, LAFC and officially arriving in LA and that they still haven't exactly talked to talk about when exactly his debut is going to be but I'm assuming it's going to be soon with him him now arriving in LA and getting ready to train with LAFC but now let's talk about some news that you know I did put here on the board and we start off with there is a report suggesting that Gaga Stolonia could de depart for Chelsea uh, but stay on loan until the end of the season now what that most likely means is that he's going to be go to, to Chelsea and he's going to be part of the loan army in Ch Chelsea. And basically, he's probably going to just stay on loan with the Chicago fr Fire until the end of the season. There was definitely a lot of speculation that he was going to go to Real Madrid, but it seems like Chelsea might have won that race. But that being said, you know, just like what I said about him going to Real Madrid, I don't think Chelsea is a good option either, especially him joining loan and part of that loan army and as a Chelsea fan I know that that we have a lot of player that was is part of that loan army and really anybody from that that loan army usually get get a chance to immerse himself to be on the Ch Chelsea senior team like the only player that I know that has been part of that loan army and actually broke through in the Chelsea senior team is Mason Mount but other than that there's really not a lot of players that actually can can come out of that lone army and in, in some way those players just kind of get get lost uh in terms of the amount of loans that they have to go through and i'm just kind of worried that's going to be the same case with gaga salonina though i will say that at least maybe if he does go on loan whether uh until the end of the season with the fire or to another team in europe at least he's, he's getting some game minutes because that's been one of the thing that's been a a problem for the u.s men's national team in terms of the goalkeeping pool right now where there's just so many goalkeeper that are just back up for the premier league team and that you know there that's there's a reason why sean johnson seems like he has really shot up the the depth chart of the u.s men's national team goalkeeping position because you know he might be the only one that actually get get game in and game game out every single week with the way that matt turner now he's going to be going to arsenal and not going to start regularly and we already know zach stefan has already not not star regularly for man city now uh moving on in terms of the next news and some more more rumors uh dc united is reported to sign german-born attacking midfielder sonny keto from bundesliga to sign hamburg now this obviously is a replacement for edison flores and even though you know they still have Edison Flores right now I talked about in the last news of the week episode most likely Flores is going to be going down to Liga MX and this rumor just pretty much solidified that that is going going to happen and that you know DC might replace him with Sonny Kiddo who I heard he has done done some good things with Hamburg I mean have scored 20 plus goals so so far uh during his time with Hamburg which is a lot of goals when you're you're a central attacking midfielder and a num number 10 so you know DC will feel like he might be the answer in terms of solving their number 10 position because they thought that when they bought Edison Forrest a couple of years ago and especially when I made that video talk about how it was such a great move for DC when they got Edison Forrest one of the more more talented number 10 down in Liga MX 
yeah, he turns out to be a huge flop for, for the team, and it seems like they finally realize that and decide to to may, may maybe sell it off for what they get and maybe get 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 his re replacement in 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 this deal. And speaking of replacement, you, you will also notice that some of the the reports I've talked about are teams that are either very desperate in terms of finding replacement for guys that haven't worked out or they 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 need to find find some replacement for injury's sake and in the case of the next news, that's exactly what Atlanta United is. I mean, Atlanta United is literally right now the most cursed team in MLS with the amount of injuries that they have to deal with every single week. And good news, I will say, for Atlanta United fans is that they didn't suffer any player with in in injuries. I mean, they didn't. it helps that they didn't play this week. But, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure Atlanta United fans, when they watched the, the, this video, they were definitely hoping when they saw here on the board that their name is not on the board, board because another player suffer a, a season ending injury or suffer a long term injury. But this time it seems like they are are looking to try to sign Tigris center back Juan Ho Jose uh Sanchez Perito and that he is actually gonna be set to to join Atlanta United on loan and that again this is clearly a signing for Atlanta United to to trying to des desperately get some center back help because when you look at that back line it is just completely decimated because uh, of injury like it's getting to a point where they had to play Alex Dijon for a for a regular basis and no offense to Alex Dijon but he's not a a a, a MLS caliber kind of, of defender for Atlanta United and I think Atlanta probably knows it too so they're desperate in terms of trying to go into transfer market to maybe find some replacement and you know I don't know much about this guy and whether or not if he, he he, he, if he is a regular starter for Tigres, I mean, you know, the the last time I've seen a Tigres center back that has gone gone to MLS is Sebastian Saido now with TFC, and yeah, he has not made this the 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 same in, impact as what TFC would have. And keep in mind, they also signed him on a DP contract, which again, this is why you don't sign DP contract on a defender because you better hope that he he of course pan, pans out because if he doesn't pans out. Then you just basically commit one of the cardinal sins of MLS, which is you never sign defender and goalkeeper on a designated player contract. And at least from what I heard here is that that's not going to be the case. I think it's just going to be a TAM contract that Atlanta United is going to sign him to. But again, this is a team that desperately needs some de defensive reinforcement with the way that they, they, like pretty much every part of the field, field every part of the starting eleven, they have been, been decimated because of injuries. Now, uh, Sporting KC is reported to complete a double signing with German midfielder Eric Tommy and that Nigerian attacker William Agada uh, from Hapoel, Jerusalem, going to be signing for for Sporting KC. By the way, the German midfielder Eric Tommy he came from from VfB Stuttgart, but yeah, this is cl clearly a move for Sporting KC to kind of just just tell their fans that yeah they're not giving up just just yet i mean as bad as this season has been for sporting kc at the now now sitting even deeper in rock bottom in in the western conference and really in in the supporter shield standings they're not giving up just yet they're looking to trying to find some some reinforcement though again you know these two player are players that i don't really hurt hurt hear, hear them uh, a lot about them though like i said one thing i will say say that could be a a, a decent signing is them getting Nigerian attacker William Agada, who, you know, you know, the last time when Sporting KC decided to sign a guy from the Israel Premier League or in the top flight of Israel soccer, turns out to be Gadi Kinda, and Gadi Kinda seem, seems to be very, very well, and I guess maybe this is kind of like just the Gadi Kinda kind of replacement for, for a bit, but yeah, you know, Sporting KC, you can see that they're definitely not, not giving up yet in terms of trying to salvage their season, and we'll see whether or not if these two signings that if they are going to complete could make a difference in terms of so of them salvaging the season or maybe like a like a make a lake push to 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 just get into the playoffs because they they need a lot of things that can go right for them even if they think can get themselves back into to a playoff hunt though we we've seen teams before where they they could be rock bottom near the the first half of the season and go on a second half resurgent but we'll see whether or not if sporting kc can do what the Sa sounders have always done with the trademark second half research and get themselves out of just a really deep hole that they're they're in right now sitting in the bottom of the western conference now there is a report suggesting that orlando city attacker alexandro pato could le leave uh to join fluminense 
FC for around $1.9 million. Now, I know Orlando City fans will not be happy about this because he's definitely one of the fan favorite from that Lions team. But, you know, you just kind of feel feel like this could ha happen with the way that Pato hasn't really made that much Im impact for or Orlando City. And it's not because of the fact that he's been, been in injured a lot. I mean, yes, he has had some, some injury issue, but we're talking about Alexandro Pato, one of the most infamous player in terms of have to deal with so many injuries throughout his career but at least this season he's been kind of healthy for most part already played 11 matches and that he's been also at times coming off the bench and being in the star 11 though again he hasn't really made as big of an impact as what what Orlando City was hoping for when they bought him and that maybe this is also kind of sense that he is kind of getting up to that age and that you know maybe him going back to to Brazil is the move that he, he need, needs to to just kind of get get his last couple year of his twilight career uh out of him and that again the 1.9 million dollar range seems like a pretty fair amount and i wouldn't be surprised orlando city would actually decide decide to commit to that deal even though i know orlando city fans will not be happy about it now uh there is a report suggesting that dc united attacker griffin yao is in talk with a transfer to belgium side kvc west they're low now. This is a very strange kind kind of rumor, and in some way, this is really giving me Chris Durkin kind of flashback. Remember how Chris Durkin leave DC United and go to Belgium, and I think he joined a team called like Centredian or something like that. But at least that team was playing in the Belgium top flight, and I'm not sure if that's the same case with KVC Vestello. In fact, I have never heard uh, of this club in my life, and that if you're actually watching this and you're you're a fan of KVC Vestello. I do apologize that I, I, I might have just disrespected your club by saying that I don't know anything about it. But I'm pretty sure no nobody knows knows where, where this team, of course, play. And that, again, you know, the reason why it's giving me Chris Durkin vibe is the fact that last time when Chris Durkin... Well, when Chris Durkin did go to join a no-name kind of Belgian side, it did not work out. And he immediately gone back to DC United. And it feels like this could be the same case again where, you know, for Griffin Yao, I just feel feel like that hype that's surrounded him when he came into the league has started to die, die down and you know part of it isn't really his fault i think he hasn't really been playing in in the the position that he needs to under both chad ashen and also also her and lasada but yeah going to europe and i know anytime when you're a Amer young american and you go, get a chance to go to europe you definitely want to chase it but if you go to Europe and you want to develop your career, you got to make sure you do join a team that, that is more well-known. And again, KVC Westello is definitely not one of those clubs that will get, get Griffin Yao chances to potentially join a, a bigger club overseas in Europe in the future. And that, again, this just feels like it's another Chris Durkin situation where he could potentially come back to DC United if he does decide to join KVC Westello. And then finally, the last news of this news of the week, we got MLS Disc... Disco decided that they are going to suspend Thiago Amada for an additional two ga games and also find Gonzalo Pineda for using inappropriate language toward a match official. So that is exa exactly the explanation that we now got of why exactly Gonzalo Pineda got sent off in the last Atlanta United game against Columbus. Because I did talk about in the review, it was kind of weird the fact that he got a, a straight red right after when Atlanta United got one back and set up a grandstand finish in stoppage time. But one thing we did know is that Thiago Amada did push a, a referee. And yeah, anytime when you put hands on a referee, it's usually going to be a bit of a, a, a suspension. And that, you know, I think it, it, it at minimum, I would say maybe like a two or three game suspension. And this seems like it is the case with him now getting a three game, game suspension. And two, of course, of course, include the one that he's already suspended because of the red card. But there you have it. That is pretty much it for the news of the week. Again, a relatively qu quick one since, you know, usually when I do the news of the week, it usually lasts like 30 minutes or so. But at least this one is kind of half the length of, of that. But let me know in the comments below what do you think of the, these news. And if there's any news I didn't mention here on the board, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.